know they tried up. to assassinate Trump last night, last night. Yesterday, yesterday, somewhere up in Pennsylvania. Yeah. I don't condone that at all. No. Even though he's wicked, he's of the devil, amen, and just ought to go to hell. I don't, I don't, <laughs> amen, condone. <laughs> The only reason why you live in Trump is because God wants you to live. That's it. That's all. That's right. You can hold your fists up all you want. What were you doing? Were you yelling white power? Is that what you was doing? Is that, is that supposed to be white power? Or are you mimicking black folks from the 60s, black power? Right. The thing you should have done was dropped on your knees and said, Lord Jesus! That's right. That's right. Lord Jesus! That's right. I repent! That's right. I repent! That's right. Gino Jennings, the outspoken leader of the First Church of Our Lord Jesus Christ, recently addressed the failed assassination attempt on former President Donald Trump in a fervent and thought-provoking sermon. Jennings asserted that Trump's survival was not merely a stroke of luck or the result of robust security measures, but a clear sign of divine intervention. Trump is alive because God wants him to live, Jennings proclaimed, emphasizing that every event in the political realm is orchestrated by a higher power. He delved deeper into the incident, questioning the symbolic gestures made by Trump both during and after the event. Jennings suggested that these gestures might hold profound spiritual meanings that go beyond their immediate political context. He urged his congregation to look past the surface and consider what these signs could indicate about the future and the role of divine will in shaping it. Jennings also encouraged his followers to reflect on the broader implications of such occurrences, not just for Trump but for the nation as a whole. He emphasized that the preservation of Trump's life could be seen as a testament to a larger divine plan at work and that it was crucial for believers to stay vigilant and spiritually aware in these tumultuous times. This perspective, Jennings argued, would help his followers better understand the complexities of current events and their potential impact on the future of the country and its leadership. All these men say they're Christians, yet never repented of their sins, That's right. never been baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, and never received the baptism of the Holy Ghost, and don't even know Jesus Christ as God Almighty. That's right. There's not a variety of ways to be saved. No. One way, one standard, one law to govern everybody. That's right. But God was watching over you. That's right. Having mercy on you. Mercy. He knew one day you will repent of your sins yeah. and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ That's right. and seek him for the Holy Ghost. That's right. God saw you pray. When you couldn't see yourself. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God saw you fasting when you couldn't see yourself. Hallelujah. God saw you serving him. Thank God when you couldn't see yourself. That's right. There's not a judge in the world more righteous, more righteous. and more fair yeah. than God himself. That's right. Why who would serve a God like that? Hallelujah. Are you listening? Hallelujah. Jennings proclaimed, suggesting that this was an opportunity for Trump to repent and realign with God's will. Despite facing criticism from ardent Trump supporters who may see this as a challenge to their unwavering support, Jennings emphasized the spiritual significance of the event. He questioned the symbolic gestures made by Trump, implying that they might carry deeper, spiritual meanings that should not be overlooked. Jennings urged his congregation to reflect on the broader implications of such occurrences, stressing the importance of understanding the role of divine will in political events. He encouraged his followers to consider that the preservation of Trump's life could be part of a larger divine plan, offering Trump a chance to seek repentance and guidance. This perspective, Jennings argued, is essential for believers to stay spiritually vigilant and aware especially in these tumultuous times. By doing so, they can better grasp the complexities of current events and their potential impact on the future of the country and its leadership. As you already know, the assassin's bullet came within a quarter of an inch of taking my life. So many people have asked me what happened. 
tell us what happened, please. And therefore, I will tell you exactly what happened. And you'll never hear it from me a second time because it's actually too painful to tell. Delegates and fellow citizens, I stand before you this evening with a message of confidence, strength, and hope. Four months from now, we will have an incredible victory, and we will begin the four greatest years in the history of our country. Together, we will launch a new era of safety, prosperity, and freedom for citizens of every race, religion, color, and creed. The discord and division in our society must be healed. We must heal it quickly. As Americans, we are bound together by a single fate and a shared destiny. We rise together or we fall apart. I am running to be president for all of America, not half of America, because there is no victory in winning for half of America. Donald Trump recently surprised Pastor Geno Jennings with a speech that emphasized unity and healing for all Americans. This unexpected move has garnered attention and sparked a variety of reactions across the nation. During the speech, Trump spoke about the importance of coming together as a country, regardless of political differences, and highlighted the need for healing and reconciliation in these divisive times. Trump's message resonated with many, particularly within Pastor Jennings' congregation, where the emphasis on unity and peace aligned with Jennings' own calls for prayer and nonviolence. In his speech, Trump acknowledged the challenges faced by the nation and expressed a commitment to fostering a sense of community and solidarity among all Americans. Pastor Jennings responded positively to Trump's speech, noting that it reflected a step toward the repentance and realignment with God's will that he had previously emphasized. Jennings praised Trump's effort to promote unity and healing urging his congregation to pray for the former president and support initiatives that aim to bring people together. This development has added a new dimension to the ongoing discussions within Jennings Church, encouraging members to reflect on the broader implications of political events and their potential impact on the spiritual and social fabric of the nation. In conclusion, Donald Trump's surprising speech Emphasizing unity and healing has not only garnered widespread attention, but also resonated deeply within Pastor Gino Jennings' congregation. This alignment with Jennings' calls for reconciliation and spiritual realignment highlights a rare moment of convergence between political and religious discourse. Jennings' positive response to Trump's message underscores a shared vision of fostering community and solidarity, emphasizing the importance of prayer and nonviolence. 